As we all know, diamonds are the hardest material we can find on planet Earth. They are also one of the most valuable available commodities, capturing the minds and souls of humans as soon as they were first discovered and causing more than a few wars throughout history. Diamonds are unique geological wonders that form deep within the Earth, then make their way to the surface and into our lives. As far as we know, the deposits of diamonds are finite, and although new mines are opened every now and then, there will come a day when this well of fortune will eventually dry up. That makes the history of diamonds very exciting. But, where does this history start? How are they formed, can they be artificially produced, and how did people find diamond deposits in the first place? We will try to answer all these questions in this video. So, fasten your seatbelts, we are taking off to the place where it all started. In order to do that, we will need to take a short chemistry class and see what the diamond's building blocks are. You know how some people say that diamonds are made of coal? This common belief was perpetuated for centuries now through literature, movies, and other available media. For instance, in one of the scenes from Superman 3, the titular Kryptonian takes the lump of coal, uses his super strength, and crushes it into a beautiful diamond. Of course, we can wholeheartedly say that all these claims are 100% false. In other words, distinct forms of the chemical element carbon exist in both coal and diamonds at their core. It is included in the periodic table of elements under the capital C. The biggest difference between the two materials comes from the purity of these two forms of carbon. In their essence, diamonds are entirely pure carbon turned into their crystalline form. These pure carbon diamonds are 100% transparent and hold the highest value. The diamonds with some lesser impurities usually hold some hue or they are slightly milky and murky, and as you can guess, they are not as valuable as their pure carbon brothers. Speaking in more chemical terms, a natural carbon atom features the nucleus made up of six protons and six neutrons, balanced out by six electrons. Diamonds are made from repeating units of atoms joined to four other carbon items through the covalent bonds, which are the strongest possible chemical bondage. Together they form a firm tetrahedral network which lends diamonds their legendary endurance. We can see the molecular structure of diamonds compared to some other carbon-based materials. It looks sharp, pure, precise, and essentially rock-solid. Coal, on the other hand, is an entirely different beast. Sure, this material is carbon-based, but it also contains a significant amount of other compounds in this instance. As we are all aware, coal is made up of the preserved remains of extinct plants and animals. And so, after the process of fossilization eliminates most of the other substances and materials, the carbon still remains very far away from its purest, diamond-grade form. The same is true of graphite and other typical carbon-based substances. So, unless you find a piece of 100% pure carbon, a magic spaceman would not be able to turn it into a diamond for you, regardless of all the superpowers at hand. After talking about the components that make up diamonds, let's examine how they are transformed into diamonds. For that we will have to travel to Precambrian Eon, the period between Earth's formation, let's say 4,600 million years ago. give or take, and the start of the Cambrian period. The point where most of the major groups of animals started roaming the Earth about 541 million years ago. That's yet another piece of evidence that debunks the theory that diamonds are made from coal. Coal is mostly made from life forms that started their life journey during the Cambrian period. If we are to be a bit more precise, we could say that most of the discovered diamonds in general were formed somewhere between 3 billion years and 1 billion years ago under very specific conditions at the depth of 150 to 200 kilometers below the Earth's surface. If this looks a bit shallow we would like to point out that this is the point very early in Earth's history, where the planet was still forming under some incredibly violent circumstances. So, what exactly happened all that time ago? Diamonds begin their journey as a type of carbon known as polycrystalline. This carbon becomes compressed and heated to an incredibly high temperature, under high pressure, which causes it to crystallize into diamonds. The process typically takes place a hundred miles underground and is so incredibly slow that it can take over a billion years for diamonds 
to fully form. Once diamond crystals are formed, they are still hundreds of miles away from being found and sold. Over millions of years, plate tectonics and volcanic eruptions help to bring diamonds to the surface, as volcanic magma carries diamonds and other minerals to the Earth's surface. The majority of diamonds that are found come from areas known as primary or secondary diamond sources. Primary diamond sources are known diamond reserves located in certain parts of the world. These diamond reserves are usually located near ancient rivers or kimberlite deposits, where kimberlite pipes form and carry diamonds up from the Earth's mantle. Some of the most famous primary diamond sources include Russia's Murney Mine, the Argyle Mine in Australia, and the Cullinan Mine in South Africa. Secondary diamond sources are sourced from world water bodies, such as rivers, lakes, and oceans. Some diamonds make their way to surface waters and are gathered in a variety of ways. For example, some diamonds are identified in rivers and streams by skilled diamond prospectors, who use simple tools such as sieves and pans to sift through the sediment. In addition to being found in rivers, diamonds are also recovered from alluvial deposits along the world's coastlines in the process of offshore mining, or from shallow surface deposits. At the end of a diamond's lengthy journey, the average diamonds found in jewelry stores today originate from either Canada, Australia, Angola, Central African Republic, South Africa, or Russia. Each of these countries produces diamonds of varying sizes and shapes, providing jewelry store owners with a range of selections to choose from. Ultimately, it's clear that diamonds have a truly incredible and fascinating history. While their journey from the depths of the earth to the jewelry box can take thousands of years, the final result of each diamond is always breathtaking. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe so that I can continue to upload new videos.